Hello, my friends. Yeah. I, I get to say this for the first time in two years, almost yeah. to the day. Good morning, students. <laughs> Many of you are new and do not yet know the proper response to that. Don't worry, you will learn. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Joko Cruise 2022. <laughs> uh, this is the orientation. Uh, how many of you, out of curiosity, by a show of hands, are brand new to Joko Cruise this year? <laughs> All right. Awesome. Uh, we've got some slides as soon as I make sure that they are actually plugged in and working properly. Go ahead and throw to that on the wall. Okay, so far so good. So on Joko Cruise we do slideshows, and that's really all we do. Yeah, it's, it's just so. all slides all week. All week long. So, let's, uh, Let's, yeah, let's move ourselves a little bit. Okay, sure. Um, so there will be a quiz. Uh, no, seriously, thank you so much, everyone who's taking their first... How many of you is this your first cruise? Wow. Wow. Yeah. This is just like every other cruise there ever is. <laughs> slides. A lot of slides. A lot of slides. Mostly about slides. Overhead like, projector. You know. Yeah. I hope each one of you has prepared a slideshow because we <laughs> don't have enough slides to fill up the whole cruise. So we need, we need to crowdsource it. So a lot of this stuff is on the website, been in emails, but... Just the sort of basics of Joko Cruise, we're just kind of going to walk through this relatively quickly. Uh, but if anyone has any questions about a particular thing, uh, hang on to it until we get through the slides, because the whole back two-thirds of this event is just going to be open to any questions that you have that we can uh, help you enjoy your Joko Cruise. Um, Jonathan, any benedictions before we get started? You don't have to stay here and answer these questions. You're important. Your name's on the thing. Benedictions. Uh, I, uh, I'm just so wait. I saw I saw all the new people. How many people have been here have cruised with us before? Woo! Wait, that's the same number. Of... <laughs> There's always about half and half new people and people who are just weird completists who insist on <laughs> going to everything. Uh, I salute both of you. I mean, I, you know, I talked about this a little bit in my welcome letter, but I kind of need this thing right now. Yeah. And it has been a cold, dark, strange couple of years uh, without it and without everything else that was taken away. And uh, I have been so looking forward to just being locked up on this boat with all y'all. <laughs> I'm so excited to be trapped with you. Yeah, you know, and I was just saying, I was just saying to somebody in the elevator, the thing about it is when you first get on a cruise ship, it feels strange. And then about 24 hours later, it starts to feel like the, the rest of the world is the fake part, and this is the real part. And that's when you know you've truly crossed over. <laughs> that's when you need to start thinking about getting off the ship, because you can't stay on forever, I'm sorry to say. But I'm so, I'm so glad that everyone is here, uh, and... Uh, you know, thank you for being here, and I know you're going to have a great week, and uh, I know I'm going to have a great week, too, because here we are together. So, thank you, everybody. But enough homilies, on to the slides. First things first, uh, if you have not visited your muster station yet, has anybody not visited their muster station to take the safety drill? Anyone at all? It's okay, we're not embarrassing you, but please go do that now. Uh, your muster station is on your key card, the number on your key card. The stations are up on deck three. Uh, uh, the even numbers are along one side, the odds are along another. You can ask any staff member to help direct you. You just have to go and find your muster station and check in briefly with the person there. They'll click you off of a tablet uh, and then you're all done. And then at some point, watch the video that is available either on the Navigator app or on the TV in your room, the safety video, as far as what happens uh, in the event of any sort of emergency. But please go take care of that now. The ship needs you to do that before we can depart. So we promise we're not talking about anything important for the first 10 minutes, so. <laughs> no, <laughs> apologize, to the, apologize to the rest of you. No, right? sure. here. Don't tell, don't tell me. Wasting 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and next to slideshows, the mustering is the best part. That's right. <laughs> I love a good mustard. <laughs> a nice spicy mustard. <laughs> Tangy mustard. So, uh, Joko Cruise is built around various shows and events, like any convention. This is a ridiculous thing to try to explain to people. 
But the basic structure is uh, there is a main concert almost every evening. Uh, there's an early and a late concert. Uh, and then there are other events on the official schedule that is our performers and guests that we've brought on to give various readings and presentations and uh, workshops and things like that. Uh, and then there is a thing called the Shadow Cruise, which if you are not familiar, basically we turn over a great deal of the space and time on this ship towards all of you and many people organize and run their own events of, of all stripes. There's dance lessons, there's book clubs, there's meetups for people who are in the medical profession or uh, tattoo meetup to sort of show everyone and show off your various tattoos. It's all sorts of interests and, and hobbies and things that people want to talk about and meet up about. Um, and those are sort of the three main things that are happening on board. If you look on the schedule on the sked page, that's what you see is those various things. We take no credit or responsibility for anything in the Shadow Cruise. <laughs> is that legally binding? Correct, I yes, said it. It's the law. Unless anything is like really good, in which case, yeah, we made that happen. Um, where can you get the schedule? The schedule is available online on our SCED page. That's the, the website. Uh, the scheduling website is jokacruise2022.sked.com. You can visit that site even without uh, paying for internet access here on board, it has been safe listed on the ship's network. So both the Joko Cruise website and our schedule page, you can access any time. There are occasional changes and updates to the schedule. I can already think of two that I have to make before tomorrow morning. Um, so uh, you can find updates there, as well as there are physically posted schedules uh, throughout the ship in a lot of the elevator banks on the main decks. Uh, also, there are schedules outside of most of the venues on the ship and with the schedule for that day of what's happening in that particular venue. And we have a whole team of people who are here to just work on even more ways to deliver you the schedule. That's right. So, as the week evolves, there might be a few more. In 2025, we are going to have a person posted every five feet shouting the schedule at you, including inside your cabin. Uh, hey, would everyone please welcome the fourth partner uh, and the most important leg slash arm slash appendage of Joko Cruz through West Um The schedule is also available on various digital signs throughout the ship, and again, also each day's schedule will be delivered, printed and delivered uh, outside your stateroom, uh, I believe the evening before, so around, around dinner time, turned out service, you should get the schedule for the next day. So there's any number of ways to see when something is happening. Um, as discussed, the main uh, events of the evening, shall we say. There's two main dinner seatings in the main dining room, and early and late. Most days, that is at 5 and 7.30 respectively. Today, because we are sailing away at 5, it's 5.30 and 8. But usually there is the red team, which has the 5 p.m. dinner and the 7.30 p.m. show. Who's on the red team here? Yeah. On the red team. And then the gold team has the early show and the late dinner. Fewer but feistier. Yes. Okay. See, the way it works is the the gold team are the responsible ones who come to the show sober, enjoy themselves, then eat dinner immediately, fall asleep. The red team have several drinks in them before they arrive at the show. Are super rowdy for the first forty minutes and are asleep by minute seventy. Um, you were, you each should have gotten lanyards reflecting your gold or red team. Um, Association. That is what gets you into each appropriate show. You just there'll be a, a ship staff members, I believe, at the doors uh, checking your lanyard. We just uh, to, to make sure that there's room for everyone in each seating. Also, uh, the other wrinkle to dining is day four because we are in St. Croix from one until eight p.m. They have what's called open dining in the main dining room, which is basically any time between five thirty and nine thirty, I believe. You can go and eat basically any time there. That said, if you do plan to eat in the main dining room, they do ask that you try and get yourself there roughly when your normal seating would be, just so there's not 1,500 people all showing up at 7.30 or something like that, because then the ship would tip over. <laughs> and as someone who loves to roll in five minutes before the stated closing time, they don't love that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Especially when you're like, um, can I have, um, what's, what's your serve here? Place? Four Caesar salads. <laughs> what takes the longest to prepare? <laughs> <laughs> what's your slowest meal? Um, all shows here in the world stage, or world theater, or whatever they've called it this year, uh, are also simulcast in the B.B. King's Lounge, which is midships on deck two, three? You think two. I know by now. One of those two. decks, two. deck two. Uh, and also I believe they're simulcasting it in the Billboard on Board uh, bar, which is right out here, deck two. It is also simulcast on your stateroom televisions, as well as the on-demand system, they, got, they call it IPTV, I believe. Yeah, you can look for Encore. On, on your TV screen and find the recordings of the prior shows. Yeah, we, we accumulate all the previous days and previous days to that as day's shows on there. So if you have missed a show or really want to see it again, it's available for you to rewatch anytime. Um, we don't expect this to be an issue this year. It's actually never really been an issue, but as a general rule, um, because there are multiple events here, we, we ask that people don't camp in the main theater. That said, it is the discretion of the, uh, our people sort of managing the doors between each event, whether they decide it is there's too many people waiting or not that we wish to clear out the, the room and then start receiving again. I don't believe we've done that in the three, four years we've had this policy, but it is technically, um, we, we prefer that you not plunk yourself down three hours ahead of time just so you can see John Spalsy talk, because honestly, he's not that interesting anyway. <laughs> um, those of you who may, there are a number of people who are members of Club SRO, those are people who uh, volunteer to not get guaranteed seating at, at a concert. They, they uh, can see the simulcast in BB King's, uh, but also anybody can watch the simulcast in the BB King lounge. It's not limited to Club SRO people. Um, Maybe an announcement. Let's see. Let's see. No, okay, we're good. It's muted in here. Uh, there are a number of new cruiser events. Today's theme is welcome new cruisers. So welcome new cruisers. Welcome. There are a few events this evening dedicated towards helping you feel a little more welcome. Uh, there's a karaoke event happening in BB Kings following the uh, late show this evening. That is. Uh, Dedicated to only new cruisers, assuming enough of you sign up, uh, perform in the karaoke event this evening. Feel free to take part in that, or at least attend and cheer on your fellow new cruisers. There is a new cruiser dance party happening, I believe, in the Crow's Nest? Anyone? I've been too close to this schedule for far too long. It's all one big jumble. Uh, what is, what's that? I'll Google it, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Siri, where is the dance party? His uh, name is Drew, Paul. <laughs> uh, there is also a pub crawl, bar, hop, whatever you want to call it, happening uh, at 10 to 15. It starts up in the crow's nest. Uh, if you are of a pub crawl event, that is a very fun thing. Um, and as we say, it's just a place to, to find and enjoy each other's company and sort of really start to get into the swing of things uh, as we start things off. What do you do if you need help? Uh, we have uh, an army of helpers on board, a, a bunch of fellow cruisers who volunteer some of their time to help guide uh, newer people or just provide assistance as needed. Uh, they're, they're called our helpers. Uh, they all have, I believe when they are on duty, pink vests. And so if you need to find a helper, just look for the pink vest. Also, we have a number of Joko Cruise ambassadors. They are wearing pink sashes. And they are sort of people who've been on a number of cruises. And if you just have a question just sort of about how a thing works or people seem to have some sort of inside joke, what does that mean so I can understand it? They are happy to sort of help you uh, understand the culture a little better. The, uh, if, if you need help, the info desk, the Joko Cruise info desk is in the atrium, which is in the center of the ship down on deck one. Um, it, it is, when it is staffed, they are always there to help you with any sort of uh, thing relating to Joko Cruz. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, they're there from uh, 10 to 5, certainly. Okay, yes. And then, and yeah, it's opposite they're, the ship's guest services. Desk. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, their hours are posted in the schedule, the aforementioned schedule. And yes, if you have an issue specifically relating to your cabin uh, or a charge that you have a question about or anything like that, for those types of things, sort of hotel-related 
questions and issues, or if you're trying to uh, make a booking for a restaurant, a specialty restaurant or something, that you should actually speak to the ship's services desk, which is also on deck one in the atrium, but it's just it's the big desk that says ship services on the side. You can't Specifically for dining reservations, you can dial 82 from any ship's phone. Okay. There you go. Yeah, and for those of you who aren't familiar with you're applauding. <laughs> Yay, well, oh, it's it's I love both those numbers. Um, and again, uh, what we're talking about, if you're not sure, there's a number, in addition to the main dining room, there's of course the Lido Market, the big, essentially, buffet uh, on Deck 9, but also there are a number of specialty dining restaurants that you can make a reservation for, for a small to medium upcharge, depending on the restaurant. There's the Tamarind, which is Pan-Asian cuisine, there's Pinnacle Grill, which is kind of a steakhouse, and one night they do a Rudy Seldomer seafood uh, thing. There's Canaletto, which is family-style Italian. Uh, there's lots of great options, so you don't feel you have to do the main dining room every night, or the Lido, or there's a pizza joint on oh, the back deck. And, and dive in at the mid, mid pool Lido, where you can get burgers, Beyond Burgers, and hot dogs, that kind of Beyond sauce? Yes. 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 Sauce. Speaking, Speaking of that, um, we uh, always make it a point to have them add additional and enhanced vegetarian and vegan food options, which are available at most, if not all, of these places. In main dining room, there's always uh, vegetarian and vegan options available. Some of them are even off-menu, like some of the soups and sides may be available. Feel free to ask your server what's available that night, in addition to whatever may be on the menu. The dive-in, as, as has been mentioned, also has numerous uh, Beyond Meat uh, options as well. And to identify the vegan and vegetarian dining options, there's a uh series of little icons that will appear next to the menu. So there's like a little leaf thing that's vegetarian. There's a green circle thing that's vegan. There's a gluten-free icon. Um, sorry, is this too much information? No, no, oh, I, was just, just, I, I was laughing because I just saw Janet Barney sneak up on the stage because she <laughs> couldn't find the actual entrance to the bed. <laughs> um, uh, we have a code of conduct for this event, like many conventions and events. We take it seriously. We want to make sure everyone that, uh, as a safe uh, and enjoyable time. Hey, look, it's Jim Boja also not knowing where the backstage door is. <laughs> it's been a couple of years. Actually, Jim knows perfectly well where the backstage door is. He just wanted his moment to shine. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, anyway, the code of conduct is posted on numerous banners throughout the ship. It is found in your information book you received. It's on our website. It's in numerous places. Uh, familiarize yourself with it uh, if you want and need to. If you feel you have been subjected to a violation of the code of conduct, or if you spot someone that you feel is violating the code of conduct, you can fill out a report form available at the info desk uh, on deck one in the center. You can also contact any helper uh, or Joko Cruz staff member. Um, and also, if you need to speak to someone, uh, we have a ship listener um, for lack of a better term, uh, who is, as her name is Anna Bean. She is the person at the phone number uh, that is listed on the code of conduct, which is 74501. So that, that's certainly the quickest option if you need to just speak to someone, even if it's not necessarily a clear violation, you just need to speak to someone related to these kinds of issues. Anna is available 24-7, uh, uh, reachable at that number. You can dial it from any ship's phone. Uh, sorry, we have a question here. Oh, I, you know what? I believe that may have changed since I made this slide. Yeah, that slide is wrong. 74501. <laughs> uh, I moved to have that stricken from the record. Uh, just some instructions to the audience. You are to disregard the number that you saw in that slide because it is incorrect. I do not know what number you're talking about. Yeah, it says 74501 up there. I don't know. Like I was saying, we like have always, always, always said that. With always said that. We have always been at war with East Asia. Um, it's Oceania. We were at war. I can't even remember. I was East Asia. Never mind. Anyway, uh, again, feel free to call Anna at any time at that number. Um, so there is tabletop gaming happening on this cruise. We literally have a ton of games and then some in our game library. Uh, that is to be that can be found in the upper 
uh, main dining room, deck three, in the sort of way, when you just walk into the entrance, it's immediately to your left, you'll see if it's all the shelves with a bunch of games on it. Um, there are numerous places you can game, uh, essentially anywhere on the ship that's not being otherwise used, but one, several of the main areas, in the main dining room, anytime other than when they are setting up for and providing dinner service, which is basically between 3 and 10 p.m., the main dining room is almost entirely open for, for gaming. We just haven't cleared the tables except for the tablecloths, so you can always game somewhere there. Also, there is a, a number of dedicated 24-7 gaming tables in the Lido Market. Uh, that's in the uh, aft starboard section, the side that Canaletto is on, but the opposite end of the Lido. There's a group of about five or six tables there that are always uh, dedicated just for gaming. Uh, there will be signs uh, letting you know about that. And again, just anywhere that there's a space on the ship that you want to game that's not otherwise being used by an event or a shadow event or or what have you. The bridge crew. Yeah. Yeah, just plunk down on the bridge. The captain would love to play a little Magic the Gathering. He's got a great aggro red deck that is just killer. Yeah, and if you want to go to the bridge, just like go, go right up. Don't. <laughs> if somebody says stop, stop, you're not supposed to be here. Just walk right past him. Just stop. Oh, that's, do not go to the bridge. <laughs> Try it. I don't know what's going to happen. He will be confined to your stateroom. Yeah. So you will be thrown to the bridge. Yeah, you know, you know where else you can game is in your stateroom when you can't go anywhere else. Have you violated the rules? Right. You, you know where you can game? The brig. <laughs> so there is also video gaming available on board. There is up in the EXC, which is the, the used to be called the Explorations Cafe. It is deck 11 immediately above us here in the front of the ship. We have uh, World 9 Gaming. Uh, has set, set up a whole bunch of different old school and new school console games, including uh, monitors as well. There's everything from original Nintendos to, I believe, they have a PS5 or two. I have a Coleco Vision this year. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have a lot of the world's dwindling supply of uh, CRT screens up there. Yes, they do. <laughs> I would, I, I'm actually kind of really thrilled about the fact that I believe they brought a copy of Elden Ring on board because I want to know. Like, I'm fascinated by the person who pays what you pay to come on a cruise to play 78 hours of Elden Ring. I, I respect you, What's my this friend, find us after you the are. show. There is also, uh, right in the Billboard Onboard Lounge, right up here on deck two, a whole series of old school arcade cabinets. Yeah. Okay, I, I, that was really all I had. A, they're available 24 7 free play. Oh yeah, this is actually something that, that the new cruisers here can learn that, that most other people don't know. The Tron machine, very special, kind of a rare machine. And um, you can be the ambassadors for that because it's a little peculiar. It needs to, the, to add credits to it, you open the coin door and there's a little flippy rod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta diddle a flippy rod? Diddle a flippy rod. So you can open the door and just dig around with a piece of metal. Eventually, you'll hit the right flippy rod. And, and right now, the Tron machine's in an interesting mode, which is actually why I came in here in the first place, oh, where it just shows a green screen only. So you can flip the flippy rod and have credits, <laughs> we think. But what it's I'm just trying mostly to say green. is, if there's someone experienced with arcade repair, please see me after the show. Okay, so <laughs> Nine hands roll up. <laughs> I have my soldering iron right here in a shoulder holster. I'm Dr. George Atari. Am I needed? <laughs> there is also crafting, a great deal of crafting happening on board. Uh, there's a dedicated space that is uh, formerly or usually known as the Microsoft Workshop, which is set up basically with a bunch of computers in it normally where they teach a bunch of old people how to send email to their grandkids. We clear that out and they put paper down and, and cover the rugs and there is all sorts of uh, crafting workshops being uh, thrown? How do, what do you do with a workshop? Thrown. Thrown Throw a workshop. workshop. Yeah. There's a raging workshops happening all weekend there uh, by Fiona's Fineries, uh, are the people who help us organize those. There's also all sorts of, um, you know, just, uh, there's shadow crafting events, I know. And also, uh, for the first time this year, because there's been so, such growth in the crafting interest over the last few years on board, we have a dedicated space in the lower deck of the main dining room in the back, if you're, face, if you're walking in the door in the back left corner, the back starboard area, there's a section of that corner that will be dedicated 
for crafting as opposed to tabletop gaming. So hopefully we'll see how that works. Uh, that's, you know, during, again, sort of during any time that between, other than between 3 and 10 when they're doing dinner service, that'll, that'll be available 24-7 for all you midnight knitters. Uh, there's also, for those of you who need a space to just kind of decompress and be away from noise and stimulation, if that is not necessarily your, uh, your stateroom, because there's not a whole lot of places, there's not a whole lot of places to be alone and be quiet on a ship, because we're all in this place, and one thing that is maybe the most valuable thing on a cruise ship is space, and we understand that. Uh, so we do, we're do. we doing what we can, uh, and towards that, uh, during the daytime, the, there's a quiet zone dedicated in the lower right rear section of, of the main dining room down there. It's sort of a quiet back corner. Again, it will be, there will be signs. We ask that people sort of respect that area and keep things uh, quiet. If you're gaming near there, not, not be a shouting game and things like that. Um, and it's available for anyone during the day. Uh, other than, sorry, I should say, other than day six, there's a specialty lunch, and on that day, both that crafting area and the quiet area are uh, superseded by the, the lunch and then the afternoon tea we have. But all other days, those are available. And then in the evenings, from 9.30 p.m. onward, in the Lido marketplace on the starboard side, we ask that people treat that as sort of a quiet zone as well. So there are places for you to go where you can sort of be among others, but not worry about interaction or overstimulation or what have you. Were you about to say something? Sorry, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, we also uh, reassign a, a good number of the restrooms on board as gender inclusive restrooms. Uh, we, <laughs> any restroom that is uh, that is marked as uh, gender or all gender or gender inclusive, I'm not sure what the wording is on the sign, but it's open to use it, as we say, users of any gender identity or expression. Uh, the sign is on the outside will indicate the types of facilities available inside, whether it has urinals, whether it has uh, lockable stalls, whether it is uh, acce uh, accessible or not. And there is a map in the uh, information book that you have, uh, as well as on any restroom, also includes maps on all of the nearby decks of the restrooms of any type, whether gender specific or all gender restrooms. So you're never, we work to, to sort of make sure that you are never more than half the ship away and one deck up or down at worst from uh, a restroom type of your choice. And if you think we didn't make a giant spreadsheet of all the parties on the ship, <laughs> you'd be right. I mean, we did that before we did this, just now we had a reason to use it. So I came in. What can we do with this thing? Uh, the Shadow Cruise, we, really, we discussed that mostly, so I, uh, this uh, slide is kind of redundant at this point. Uh, but there it is, Shadow Cruise. Shadow Cruise, everybody. Shadow Cruise. Uh, the performers, uh, some performers hold what we start, start to call office hours, where it's more of an informal gathering in a bar space or just hanging out by the pool deck or something, or a, a sort of more informal meet and greet and Q&A. Those sometimes will get added to the schedule as the week goes on, especially with some of our new, new performers as they see and sort of get the, the flow of the event and keep an eye out for those. Generally speaking, they are aware that when they are out on deck, that you know interaction with the people, so to speak, is possible and or desired. They're, they're, you know, different performers will have different levels of tolerance for that kind of thing, and that's fine. Uh, but they are aware that you know they're and many of them are quite happy to you know just come chat with you if someone you know wants to just go up to to say Jonathan Cole and say oh hi Jonathan I'm a big fan of your work and I like your album Max go up and touch his beard yeah just go <laughs> just go ahead and start touching my face that's fine <laughs> uh, all we ask generally speaking is that uh, you please respect a performer's personal time uh, and try to sort of speak read the room like if they are with their family or they're in the middle of eating, maybe that's not the time to bother them for an autograph. But generally, you know, try and get a read. Most of them are more than happy to interact with you and, and have a conversation or what have you. And remember that we're all here for an entire week, but yeah. there's plenty of, plenty of time. And there are uh, signings for some of the, a number of the authors and some of the artists scheduled for Thursday afternoon on the pool deck. Uh, not that you, can't ask someone for, for an autograph if you would like to, but just know you will have that opportunity for those people. You can see it on the schedule. The internet on this ship sucks. It's just the way it is. It is very slow. Uh, you can use 
you, you can use it for email generally. It is, it is fine and workable, but despite the packages that claim they are better suited to streaming or what have you, it is very, at best, it is variable results. Uh, so caveat emptor, or caveat emptor, you can pay for the plans daily or per week, and also for one device or multiple devices. You can walk through that, those instructions if you like. Um, also, all three of our ports of call have cell service for all the major carriers, some more than others, but even half moon key, I have at and for example, and it's the best of the three as far as reception. So if you have an international plan and you want to activate it, usually it's like $10 a, $10 a day or something like that, that is an option that is available to you. And also in Nassau and St. Croix, a number of the bars and restaurants will have Wi-Fi to varying degrees of, of speed and, and such. But So you are not off the grid if you don't want to be. Although that said, feel free to put away your mobile devices for a week. That's pretty fun too. Yeah, pretty nice if you can. Um, your fellow Joko cruisers over the years have developed, because the internet is uh, at best semi-usable, they developed a social media setup uh, called TwitR that you can use without having to pay for internet access. It works off the ship's network, uh, and it's for you know messaging and posting and, and organizing get-togethers and things like that. Uh, the instruction, there's an instructions sheet that you should have received in your stateroom, and you all should have been emailed a code which you need if you want to sign up for a TwitR account. If you've lost that code or if you have some problems, you can get a new code from the info desk. Uh, and also, as previously mentioned, the schedule is uh, accessible without needing to pay for the internet access as well, so you can always get that. Uh, this is important for any convention, but we like to mention it here, uh, our good friend Will Wheaton. Uh, brought this to us, and it stays with us. The 531 rule, that of course being every night get five hours of sleep, every day eat three meals, and every day take one shower or a bath. Yeah. Those are minimum. Yeah, 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 at least, at least five minute. hours. <laughs> and this, yes, so on day seven, if you haven't done any of those things, you have to take 35, get 35 hours of sleep, take, eat 21 meals. Uh, you know, just, you know, take care of yourself. We know that there's a lot of stuff to do. But, you know, take care of yourself and your fellow humans who have to be around you. Right. <laughs> um, regarding the subject of FOMO, fear of missing out. These numbers have actually changed since I made this slide, but not enough to uh, eliminate the overall point. This year we have roughly 281 total programmed events, not including the various sort of dinners and happy hours and such which adds up to 368 and a half hours of things, actually it's a little more now, or 15.35 days of stuff, which you obviously can't do in seven days of cruising. So the short version is, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Try not to think of it as there's so much stuff that I'm missing, as there is always something cool to do, even if I can't go do this other thing that I like. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to say that, but Try not to let yourself dwell on the negative aspects of it. That's part of why we do this, and we want to present a whole bunch of stuff of all sorts of different interests to people, so that there's always something cool and interesting to do, even if that something is occasionally nothing. Feel free to take time to just turn off and not do a thing. Sit in your room, take a nap, read a book, uh, doom scroll Twitter, whatever what? works for you. Play games on the bridge. Yep. <laughs> do not play games on the bridge. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, time turners are not allowed in your <laughs> yeah. like that, so there is no work around. Yeah, no, that, that's a customs thing. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, health precautions. Beyond the current unpleasantness of the last two years, there are health precautions to worry about any old time on a ship, uh, which can best be fought off by washing your hands regularly. Uh, there are also hand sanitizer stations throughout the ship. Please feel free to make liberal oh, use of your elbow. The coffee it's your elbow. Coffee your elbow. Your elbow. It's good. That's great. Try not to touch your face, uh, especially if you haven't washed your hands very recently. Uh, instead of shaking hands, maybe the old elbow bump is always a good uh, move. If you feel sick, if you feel symptomatic, please uh, call the ship's medical center immediately. Like we want you to make sure that you are healthy, and we want to make sure that you. If you are not, 
well that you don't make a bunch of other people not well. So as much as we know you want to do all the things because you're here finally, if you're feeling symptomatic and sick at all, please take the time to just sort of isolate yourself back in your cabin and talk to the ship's medical staff. Yeah, we are all looking out for one another. Um, speaking of working out for one another, the masking policy on the ship. Uh, the numerous emails. The masking policy for Joko Cruz, regardless of Hal's current policy for this week, masking policy is uh, masks are required indoors everywhere except for in your staterooms and when you are eating or drinking. Um, masks are not required outdoors, say out on deck 9 and 10 and such, unless you are in a crowded situation where social distancing is not possible. Uh, the Lido pool area, which is the center pool on deck nine, which has the retractable roof, will, will be considered an outdoor area, uh, except and unless inclement weather makes them have to shut that roof for an extended period of time. But those are the areas on board. Now we know there can be some gray areas involved with this, like what is too crowded in this outdoor dance party or what have you. As a general approach, we ask that everyone please just be considerate and use your best judgment. Uh, there are lots of people with, with highly varying tolerances for risk or uh, states of uh, immunocompromised nature or what have you. And you know, we're all we all want to have a good time. We all want to you know be good to each other in every way that that, that word means. Um, so you know, if, if, essentially, if you are in a place where masks masks aren't normally required and there is someone nearby with a mask, try and respect. Uh, they're, you know, try and distance them uh, to the extent that that is possible, or if someone politely requests that you wear a mask in a situation where uh, otherwise it's not possible to move away from each other, please try and respect that request as well, and make those requests, please, uh, courteous and polite if you can. Um, this is, you know, we're all trying to relearn how to be here and amongst crowds and at live or events. anywhere. <laughs> or anywhere, really, that's a good point. Uh, and we appreciate your courtesy and consideration for for everyone. Uh, performers on the main stage, I will note, will generally not be masked. Uh, we are testing every day, um, and you know, want also to give you know, the most effective performances. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, everyone will be abiding by the mask policy. And we, of course, know that this won't be an issue because you're all awesome. Thank you for that. And they disinfect these microphones constantly. Yes, they actually, legitimately, as soon as we're done here, they're going to wipe these microphones down. Yeah. That's all the slides. That is all the slides we have. So until 4.30, when it's time to go do the uh, party upstairs, which is about 20 minutes, if anyone has questions, feel free to raise your hand. And if you can shout, uh, we'll call on you and shout it out. If you're not a, a great shout person, you can get a microphone back to you. Yours was the first hand I saw in the center. They're asking if they, there's a vegan, vegan section near where the pasta bar is in Lido today that we're asking if that's a permanent fixture or... We are pretty sure. I mean, what I can say is that that little round green circle will identify the vegan things. And that station will almost certainly be there every week. There will definitely always be vegan options and plenty of them in the Lido if it's not centered there. Uh, one right down, right down here. I have an accessibility question. Yes. Is there a way for me to find out beforehand? Uh, find out. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay. Is there a way for me to find out before an event if the event will have flashing lights? Oh, that is a very good question. The question was an accessibility question. Is there a way to find out beforehand if the event will have flashing lights? Uh, certainly the dance parties, there will be flashing lights present. I cannot think offhand of any main stage events that will have flashing lights, but that said, I will make a note for myself right now while somebody answers the next question to go through the schedule and see if there are any and do my best to make a note in any of the schedule events as such. That is an excellent question. Thank you very much. Yeah. See, you're always learning. Uh, sorry, next up. Uh, uh, over here on the left, yes. Nope, sorry, in the center left. Yes, you. <laughs> But it's not a professional doing it. 
Right. The, the question is, there are a number of pianos and instruments scattered about the stage, and the question is, are members of the general public allowed to play those pianos? Unfortunately, the general answer is no, um, because if you break it, we have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> a number of them, we are not even home. I mean, yeah, there's, for example, the there's ship pianos, and I think they might even be owned by a third party. Some of them are, like the one in the, uh, we're not allowed to call it the Lincoln Center stage either, but that stage there, that, that piano is actually locked, even to us. Yeah, uh, there's yeah, some pianos locked. not even we are allowed to use. Yeah. And we're professionals. <laughs> so we apologize, we would love to make that an option, but unfortunately, as a general rule, they ask us to have people refrain from playing it unless they are specifically assigned to do so for a performance. Okay, I saw one up. Oh, Drew's taking off. Thanks, Drew. Thank you. Yep, that's you. Uh, so I'm 80% sure that the answer to this question is yes, but uh, uh, am I allowed to take off my mask to swim? Yes, yes. Uh, the question is, are you allowed to take off your mask to swim? Seeing as both of the pools are in outdoor areas, Yes, absolutely, you're allowed to take off your mask to swim, and also if you are on the beach at one of our ports of call, you are outdoors. So yes, please feel but, free to take off your mask. But if you're doing a synchronized swimming thing with like 80 people in the pool. Yeah, if you're really jammed in there with like 150 people. Yeah. Some questions? Any other questions? Right here? Uh, okay. Yes. I'm sorry. How do you get signed up for shadow events? Yeah, on all the events, I don't think there's any events that are limited capacity. Any event on the ship, unless noted otherwise, I can only think of one or two official events like this, you just show up, and for the most part, uh, room capacity has not been an issue. Uh, obviously, this year it may be concerning for some people, depending on how popular an event is, but yes, generally speaking, any event on the schedule, just go uh, up here. Oh. What are those one or two events? Um, there's uh, Ur uh, Ursula Vernon and her husband are hosting a uh, Dungeons and Dragons one-off D and D session that could only be limited to six people because of the way it is, and that's already uh, there was already signups for that uh, via the schedule. I can't actually. That's the only one I can think of offhand. Uh, another question right up there. Sorry, we're going to hear the laugh. Room. Yeah. Oh, craft room reaches capacity. Yes, the craft room does that reach capacity. capacity. Yeah, that, that actually is a good point. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the, while there's not sign-ups for them, a number of the crafting events often reach capacity. Uh, that said, we've tried to, uh, for some of them, you know, are popular. A, a couple of them, I think they've tried to schedule multiple sessions of them. Um, and if there is, again, even during the week, if there's one that's particularly popular and there is a feasible way to schedule a second session of it, we'll often try to do that. But I guess thank you for mentioning that. Right down here. Um, open mic. Open mic also is generally free to come to, but you need to sign up. Yes, uh, there is also a shadow open mic, uh, open mic night, so to speak, which is free to attend, but there is a sign up sheet that I believe is at the info desk. To, I think so. What's that? I think so. I'm yes, uh, my understanding is the sign up sheet will be at the info desk, uh, and if you wish to actually perform in that, you should sign up for it to make sure that you get a time slot. Is there a lost and found on the ship? There's a lost and found on the ship. That is the question. It is the ship services desk down in uh, deck one. Let's uh, get through here. Up uh, top. Huh? Uh, is there a way to see all of the events? Generally, the online version. Uh, all the printed schedules on the ship are just for that specific day. Oh, here we go. Here we go. If you want to see all the. Oh, I get muted even. Curse you, Captain! So really, to see all the events at once, really the online version is your, your best set. Here, actually, technically, you can print out. Uh, there's a way to print a version of that schedule, uh, which you can talk to the um, ship services about, uh, possibly. 
but really just looking at it online is the best thing. You can, there is a scan app, or you can go to the website that's listed in your blue book as well. It's a green book this year, we call it blue book. It's a Joe Go Cruise 2022.scan.com. And you do not need to buy internet to access that. Questions? No? Sorry? Oh, Mass while singing karaoke. Mass while singing karaoke. Uh, uh, if that is happening in BB Kings, which I believe it always is, there is, as far as I am concerned, enough distance between the performers and the uh, uh, audience, and also they will be wiping down the, the microphones for each of those. Uh, so I believe it would be up to the discretion of the singer. Sure. Somebody up, somebody up there? Yes, go ahead. Oh, the blue wristband. Yeah, yeah you can take it off. Yeah, take that off. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. free. And that's down here. Okay, everyone wants to know. Everyone in the balcony can take off your wristband. They're going to be down here. Right. Everybody who asked if you can take it off. Uh, we still so have a few minutes, I think. So. Yeah, any more questions? One up here. Uh, One up here. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, will there be more what on the TVs? More content? The big, every event that's in this room, not just the evening shows, those will be rebroadcast on the, the on demand. There will be a number, of, a, a small number of events from BB Kings that will be available. There is also, there's a bunch of content that we call Shadow TV, that a number of uh, our your fellow uh, uh, Joko Cruises submitted various musical and video content that will also be available. There's also TV shows and movies, a whole bunch that the ship just has that you're also going to watch. You can watch uh, a number of live channels, uh, news channels and sports and such. Um, so it's an array of movies, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty wide, wide swap that uh, right there. What is John most excited, excited, excited for? This year? Uh, I, I'm always very excited about the last concert because that's, uh, I do a little acoustic set and then we get everybody together to sort of form a giant mega band and do a bunch of covers. So oh, it's fight crime. We do a fight crime. And uh, it's really, it's a really enjoyable uh, feeling of community with the musicians and, and just like, I just as, as a musician, it's a thrill to play with a bunch of other uh, musicians. It's a really fun musical experience that I don't get to do anywhere else. So that's my favorite. Right then. Will all the gluten free options on the menu be marked? I believe, yeah. I think that the gluten free is marked as such on the menu and in the Lido on the menus there as well. And you can certainly ask your server if you have any questions or concerns or dietary. We did! We answered yeah. all questions! Yeah. Nobody's allowed to ask another question all week. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Uh, what? Did, did, you have, did, you know, did you actually have a question? Oh, I was going to say, what if we first did it again? We can sign up. We can! Where is he? He's not here. He doesn't fall in his breath. Well, have an amazing cruise. Uh, yeah, feel free to go and again, if you're into the ship, it's super kind of fun and cool to watch this big yeah, sail, 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 sail away. So feel free to go out to deck. Go line. stand on deck and watch us go to see. There's some pretty nice stuff there, and we'll see you in here in the main concert, either at 5:30 or 8. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, everybody.